Hey art nerds, today I want to talk to you guys about drawing in about three different art styles or designing figures in three different art styles. So in the past, we've talked a lot about constructive human anatomy. This is a system that I really love and I'm going to be referencing other videos that I've created throughout this video if you'd like to learn more. But all it really is, is taking really basic shapes like these here and using them to construct figures like So before we dive too far in today, I have a video where I sort of walk you through basic human anatomy and these pages were created when I was recording that video. So basically, you need to know a few things before you really start going into how to vary what you know to design more or less cartoony, more or less realistic characters. So I have a figure of my character, Kara. She's drawn in a really cartoony style in this figure, and this was still drawn with basic human anatomy. So I wanna refresh you guys, walk you guys few feet through a few things before we dive into our main demonstration. So I hope you guys have somewhat of a grasp on basic human body shapes. There are so many different body shapes out there. This is a really, really narrow view on what is out there and the different types of shapes that people can have. And I highly recommend you practice drawing from reference a little bit to get a feel for the different types of body shapes people can have. But this is a decent enough starting point and you can change different variables, you can change different aspects to better suit your character design needs. So these are different types of torsos, which is the main trunk of our body, the main part of our body, and it includes the rib cage and the pelvis. So in some of these designs, you can see where the pelvis might be really, really obvious. You can also see where the shoulders might be really obvious. And which you choose to emphasize is going to affect how your character is designed. So here we have a comparison of what figures look like when they're drawn at different head heights. And head height refers to the length and width of the head in comparison to the rest of the body. So when I'm normally drawing my comic, Seven Inch Kara, Kara, the main character, who's a 11 year old little girl, is usually scaled at five and a half heads. Whereas if I'm doing something really cartoony in my chibi style, that's usually scaled at about three and a half heads. Now, different artists have different styles. Superhero comics, for example, the characters might be scaled at heroic proportions like eight to nine heads. And you guys can learn more about scaling your characters against their head height by reading Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. And it's always worth noting that if your library doesn't carry figure drawing for all it's worth, you can fill out a library request form and they can get a hold of it for you. You are not only helping yourself, but you're helping other artists in your area. So we've touched on head heights and I go about this a little bit more in depth in this video. So I'll make sure to link that for you guys. This is just a demonstration of how a chibi figure, a cartoony figure, a super deformed figure would scale using constructive human anatomy. For most art styles, I use some variation of constructive human anatomy to design and draw my characters. And this allows me to, dr to draw and design them consistently. And then here is just a little skeleton view comparison of a character drawn in my normal style that's like the five and a half style if we're going by Kara versus the three and a half style which is what I use for my chibi drawings. So I've lost some of my audio in this video, so I am re-recording some of the audio so that things make more sense. At this point, I'm really just kind of comparing what I changed between the two different figures at this stage. So we have smaller heads, we have smaller hands, we have smaller feet, but all in all, very little changes from a chibi drawing to a more rendered out drawing. And here we have 
um, a more finished version of that drawing. Clothing's been added, facial features have been added, and I hope you guys notice that what really makes the difference is just what proportion things are drawn in. So eyes are drawn much bigger, the hands are drawn much bigger, the feet are drawn much bigger. We're really accentuating and exaggerating things that we want to draw attention to. And this is just kind of a breakdown of how I design people's faces using constructive anatomy. I have videos where I talk about that in a bit more. And then here is a demonstration of a human man drawn with accurate head proportions. So this is based on Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth, which I really recommend you guys check out. So men are usually drawn at about seven heads tall. If we're talking about heroic proportions, then we would draw them eight to even 10 heads tall. That would be like superhero sort of proportions. And how many heads a figure has is going to determine where the landmarks fall on the body. So you guys can kind to see with the blue lines here that there's a rough correspondence between the number of heads in their placement and major body landmarks. And again, Andrew Loomis goes into this in great detail in figure drawing for all it's worth, which I recommend you guys check out. Now for the female figure, a six head figure is pretty common. So um, it's a little bit shorter and the features might be a little bit stockier. With the way where the legs begin, the midpoint of the body, beginning between the third head and the fourth head. So to break things down very simply, there's about eight different body types or different body shapes with loads of variation within the eight. What's missing here would be the sort of hourglass-esque figure. And again, elements of each of these can be adjusted to suit your character design needs. So if you were drawing somebody who has a triangular shaped body, it might be a really long, narrow triangle or a really wide triangle. It might be an inverted triangle. So there's a lot of variation. And here's just a quick demonstration that I did in another video um, where I was teaching students how to draw chibi figures. So you can draw even very cartoony figures very simply using constructive anatomy. And it's important to keep in mind when you're drawing the cylinders for the arms and the legs, and this is something that most people get really confused by, you want to keep in mind that you're drawing the cylinders in perspective. And this can be hard if you're new to perspective. So we're going to do a really quick demo. I'm going to draw the horizon line. And for cylinders, we have a curved top, we have a curved bottom. The bottom for arms and legs is going to be curved toward the horizon line. So when you're drawing these sort of shapes, you want to always curve it towards the horizon line. So if we had a much taller cylinder, and I'm just sketching it here. So usually when you guys see me draw, you'll see me draw just the, the part of the cylinder that's relevant for my information. But when you're first learning how to do this, you should draw it all the way through. So the further your cylinders top and bottom are from your horizon line, the more they're going to be curved. So let's take what we've learned about cylinders and apply this to a human body. So we've drawn our horizon line and we're going to go ahead and place our figure. Now where I've placed the horizon line would mean that the viewer is a very short viewer. Since the viewer or the horizon line is determined by the viewpoint of the reader or the viewer or the viewpoint that the author wants the reader or the viewer to have. So if we were to place a horizon line like this on a person, that would indicate that the viewer is really a very short person. Maybe be a child viewing someone much larger than them. And it's really important to at least understand the basic rules of perspective, even if you're going to use tools like Clip Studio Paint that allow you to place characters and backgrounds. Because if you understand the rules of perspective, you can place your characters more accurately and your piece will feel more realistic. So it'll feel less like your characters are just floating in space. So we went ahead and we drew our rib cage and the pelvic oval. 
and um, I'm probably just explaining the whole Clip Studio Paint thing to you guys. Again, I lost some of my audio and I apologize. So now we're drawing the wheelbase for the legs and we're going to do stick figure arms and legs just to place this character. triangles for the feet and I do the stick figure placement every time I draw a character it really helps me to pose them even if it's a simple pose like this because I can redraw this skeleton very quickly and it allows me to figure out the pose before I put a lot of time into figuring out um, figuring out like the arms and the legs that sort of thing so we draw in an oval for the head And then we're switching over to blue and I'm very carefully drawing the cylinders and I'm drawing them through which is something I don't do often enough when I'm drawing for demonstration and a lot of people seem to get confused by this stage. Um, if you read a lot of the how to draw manga books that are aimed at American audiences so like the Chris Hart how to draw manga books they do these oval shapes to indicate where the arms and legs go and honestly I hate those shapes and I kind of want to do a tutorial in the future where I take one of those books and I show you guys how to take what they teach and take it to the next level using constructive anatomy. So I'm very careful about how I'm drawing the cylinders here so that they are heading, they're curving towards the horizon line. Okay, so when you are cartooning characters in perspective or um, in constructive human anatomy, it's really about selecting which features you want to emphasize and exaggerate and which features you want to minimize. And minimization is still a form of exaggeration because you are making it much smaller than it would be in, in real life. So think of it from a design aspect as well as a storytelling aspect. So here we have four drawings of Kara. This was created for my Manga Madness presentation. And as you guys can see, even though it's all the same character, she looks very different in each style. We have realistic, we have my house style, we have a more cartoony style like my chibi drawing style, and then we have a really cute cartoony style. So it's all the same character, but I'm emphasizing different elements of the same character to suit each style and to suit the needs for that sort of style. So for realistic, we need things to be identifiable. We need things to be relatable. I spend a little more time rendering her hair, rendering her eyebrows. I'm a little more careful about the freckle size and placement. I render her nose out a little bit more. I render her lips out a little bit more. Her eyes are a little bit more rendered. For my house style, it's all about large expressive eyes, large mouths, easy to read expressions. So she has kind of a cute button nose here. The nose is larger than in the realistic, but it's a little bit more simply drawn. The ears are almost the same, but the eyes are much larger. Then in the chibi style, we're exaggerating elements from this style even further. So she has the large jug handle ears. I think those are really cute. A circle for the nose. The mouth is even bigger but a little bit more simple. The freckles have been simplified a bit. The eyebrows have been exaggerated a bit and the forms of the hair have been exaggerated a bit to be more fluffy. And then finally in the cartoon style, we've taken the exaggeration to an extreme. The eyes are really large and simple. They're very expressive though. The hair forms are very rounded. They're cute, they're bouncy, they're fluffy. The ear is very, very simple. The mouth is large, wide, and expressive. It's all designed to imply that this is a really mischievous, fun-loving kind of little girl. So we have four different styles, all the same character, but we've exaggerated different elements of the style to suit the needs for different types of stories. So over here, I have a couple of chibi characters that I designed in a chibi drawing workshop that I did online. And you can see that you can draw different elements a little bit more rendered out, like eyebrows, noses, mouths, if it's important to that character, then you should render it so that people can tell it's that specific character. So elements that people commonly change when they're designing more cartoony characters is... 
this is another part where my audio was lost and it's unfortunate because it's a pretty sizable chunk. I was talking about stylizing the hands and how even if you can see the joints in a person's hands when you're drawing them cartoony you might want to exaggerate the gesture or even eliminate the joints. I believe I call these hands balloon hands. I may have mentioned that it may have been lost and one of the reasons for that is because I really kind of under emphasize the joints. Now that's a type of emphasization as well. What you show and what you choose not to show. So here I'm trying to replicate the gesture that I had drawn in the demonstration sketch and I'm having trouble doing so. There's something wrong with my hands. But it was just to show you guys that even though you can see the joints in my fingers because I have kind of stubby little hands you might not see them in my hand, uh, the drawn hands. And then here is an example of different ways to stylize eyes. So I did a demonstration on Power Hour when someone had asked if I would show them how to draw anime eyes. And what I did is I walked through the different stages from a very realistic eye, which is the eye we're talking about here, where I draw the bags under the eyes, I draw my double eyelids, because I'm drawing this from reference from drawing myself, and then I work progressively more cartoony, eliminating different elements of that eye to stylize it and to simplify it and to cartoon it. Now a lot of artists have in the past talked a lot of smack about cartooning, but really cartooning is a very evolved form of drawing because it requires analyzing what you see, thinking about it, and then reducing it to simple understandable forms that can be very easily translated. So when you guys are practicing and maybe you're drawing from manga reference, I want you guys to really think about why the artist is drawing what they're drawing, what their thought process might be. Don't just rote copy it. So to the right, you guys will see even more stylized eyes. These are based on various eyes from different anime with like a Slayer style eye at the top right. And uh, I'm not sure if you can hear the garbage wind machines that my rich next door neighbor employs, but I can't ignore them. <laughs> Sorry. I know that's off topic, but it's hard to talk to you guys when all I can hear is in the background. So, um, it really helps to understand how real eyes look and not just like have a mental schema of how it looks, but to actually understand it work from reference. So here are some examples of much more cartoony eyes where I utilize um, a large round circle around the eyes to place the eyebrows. Now this is a trick that I learned from the book series Drawn to Life by Walt Stanchfield, which again, if you do not have it in your library, please take a moment and fill out a library request form. So over here we have a really basic chibi face template. I have that available to my art nerds if they want to practice along. And all I did was I drew different types of eyes. It's, so it's all the same base face, but different types of eyes because I wanted to show how different stylizations of eyes, different sizes of eyes and eyebrows and whether or not we draw eyelids, how much that can actually change how the Unfortunately, I seem to have lost you guys again, but I basically just wanted to talk about how different types of eyes can really affect how the face is perceived, even when you've changed nothing else. So these were all drawn on a chibi template base that I have shared with my art nerds, and even though it's a really cutesy base, you can see how the different styles of eyes can really affect the character design. So a great way to find your own art style is to take a character that you've already designed or you can even like practice drawing yourself or somebody you love and draw them in the art styles of other artists. And what's really important to do when you're doing this is you really want to focus on what elements make their style their style and why they do what they do. So I completed this style test in 2014 and I did several different styles. It was styles that spoke to me or styles that I thought were really cute or styles that I'd worked in before. And some of the illustrations did not turn out super great. Some turned out really
So style tests can be really great for refining your own style, finding new elements that you can add to your style, or just practicing drawing something new. The more drawing practice you get, the better you're going to get at drawing. So for today's drawing demonstration, we're going to do three different styles. We're going to be doing jelly bean and rubber hose, dots for eyes, and realistic. And in case you guys aren't familiar, I'm going to introduce two different types of torso designs. These are very popular in animation, so you might want to read the animator's survival kit for a little bit more information. But up here we have flower sack style torsos. These can be really great for animals or kid designs, something a little rounder, a little more cartoony. And then we have Jelly Bean, which is even more rounded and cartoony. And this comes up in the Glenn Vilpu drawing manual, as does this type of torso design up here. So I highly recommend that if you do not own So hopefully you guys can see how these different body types would affect how the finished art might come across. I learned about flower sack animation from the animator survival kit. So they have lots of really great information on how to use this as an expressive exercise and how to use this to develop your character acting. I learned about the jelly bean body type from the Glenn Vilpu drawing manual. And this is one of kind of the earlier stages for understanding how the torso is formed. But it's just a really great torso base for animals and for small children. So here you can kind of see how this how those different torsos affect how the each character looks. So let's start with realistic. So I'm going to start sketching with red and then switch over to blue to tighten my details. I've got a fairly smaller space than normal. So I'm starting with a rectangular torso, sketching in the rib cage and the pelvis, a hole for a neck. And I'll keep the movement simple, but I will have some movement. So I kind of blocked in where the pelvis is going to go the neck hole and the bow of the collarbone or where the two arms are connected. And right now I'm not super focused on getting everything in, um, not in perspective, in proportion. Um, I'm just trying to kind of figure out the gesture of the character. That's why often I'll do like those little thumbnail sketches that you see in some of my videos and then go from there. Okay, so now I have an elevated stick figure. Mittens to kind of block in the hand gesture. So even at this, we're doing realistic for this one, but or more realistic at this one. Even at this stage, you can tell what's going on with this character. So let's revon. Unfortunately, I lost you guys again, but that's okay. This offers me an opportunity for revision as well. So we are drawing the cylinders for the arms and the legs, and I'm trying to be careful to draw them through. You guys might notice that I actually taper them as they enter the next form. So as one cylinder ends, it tends to get narrow it narrower before it enters the next cylinder. And I've got a little bit of curve to the arms and legs here. This just adds a little bit of dynamism and makes the forms more interesting for the viewer. This is something that you can really kind of develop as you practice. So for the hands at this stage, I just block them in really roughly using kind of a mitten shape. And then the neck is a pretty simple cylinder as well. And this is the sort of thing that the more often you draw it, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. And I have a lot of videos here on this channel where I either practice it and I demonstrate how I practice it for you, or I walk you through the steps. So if you're interested in learning constructive anatomy, 
then there are a lot of great resources here on the channel for you. So I am using cylinders for the legs, but you know, the more I think about it, it's kind of like a conical cylinder because of the tapering effect. And I've done a lot of figure and life and reference drawing over the years. So I already have kind of a good feel for how the basic muscle forms are going to look. But when you're just starting out, that might be more difficult for you. So I turned that oval into a circle and now I'm extending the circle down into a spade shape. And I have a lot of drawing tutorials on this channel for how to draw faces, how to draw anime style faces, faces and head construction. So I'll have those linked for you guys down in the description below. Next, we're gonna be doing dots for eyes. Okay, so next we're doing dots for eyes. And in my dots for eyes style, I usually start with the head because this style can be a two to three head height sort of style. Then I draw a little itty bitty little torso. And then depending on how I wanna draw the arms and legs, sometimes I'll use kind of long triangles for the legs and sometimes I'll flesh them out a little bit better. But since we're doing something a little bit more cartoony, let's go with that. So we still have kind of the basics of breaking down the figure, thinking about the figure in discrete parts. It also helps that I already did my pose design next door. So all I'm doing is translating that pose into a different So you guys can see that the forms for dots for eyes are fairly simplified. We are still using basic construction to, construction to construct this figure. We're using cubes, we're using spheres, we're using cones, we're using um, cylinders to construct the figure. So for the dots for eyes style, because it's simple and really cartoony, I try to exaggerate the pose a little bit more. So now I'm turning kind of that rough shape into a circle and then I'm extending the circle down into the cheeks. You can think of it as like an oblong oval or an oval horizontally for the cheeks. And the eyes are just dots for eyes. The placement for this is really simple. Now, rubber hose is sort of like what the old Steamboat Willie slash old Mickey Mouse cartoons use, what a lot of Warner Brothers cartoons used to use, what Cuphead uses, and what Adventure Time uses. So it's like really noodly arms. So we're doing the jelly bean for this one. This is a style I haven't really developed yet, so it's going to take me a while to kind of find my beat. And even if you are working in a very simple style, sometimes it can take a while for you to find style elements that work within that style. So you might make a lot of ugly within one style before you hit on something you like. So just kind of play with it, adjust the proportions, and do different iterations of the same drawing. Keeping the elements you like and discarding the elements that that you don't like or you find unappealing. And sometimes if you start getting really down about it, it really helps to ask a friend. Actually, let's. So at this stage, since this is a style that's new for me, it may take me a little bit longer to find what I'm looking for. So I'm just kind of doodling it out. One of the things I know I really want to emphasize though are the rubber hose arms and legs. And what I mean by rubber hose is that there's no obvious joints. So you guys might've seen how I, originally the arm was bent and I smoothed that out into a U shape. There's also a lot more curve and the gesture is much more defined. So the head in this one is going to be smaller than in our dots for eyes style. So our dots for eyes style head was about two heads tall, whereas our realistic style was about maybe six heads tall. So the uh, jelly bean and rubber hose is gonna be, I guess about a third or maybe three and a half heads tall. So I went ahead and I sketched in the mitten hands. We have the wedges for the feet and now we're ready to start adding some detail to our figures. Now, since I draw Kara a lot, let's draw Naomi. So Naomi is a teenage character. Let's do that in red since we're gonna draw on top of it. So 
she would have a bust and let's give her a little bit more hips so we're just accentuating the hips a little bit more okay, so I'm subdividing the face I'm just kind of sketching everything out figuring everything out at this stage and a little bit later on you guys will see how everything kind of changes depending on the art style so we're going to use this as like our control stage so I say realistic but this is really more my house style I still owe you guys uh, a realistic style video it's been a while since I've done realism other than like um, animals and flowers and rocks but when I was in undergrad realism is pretty much all I did because that is what my department really pushed so this is more of a when I do cartoony it's also kind of a I lost you guys again I'm so sorry so basically my art is just kind of a departure from what was traditionally pushed on to me as well as the things that actually inspired me to learn how to draw in the first place so we're using the blue lead to start sketching in her clothes and to also start tightening up some of the details I really love using these red and blue pencils because it's very easy for my camera to pick it up and for you guys to see what I'm doing so in the realistic style we're gonna be adding more details to the the clothes and we're going to try to render the clothes and how they fall on the body more realistically and in the near future I'm going to have a full video on how I draw clothes that's not a tutorial on how to best draw clothes but just how I handle clothes but basically I think of them as major shapes and then I break them down and add more details so I construct clothes the same way I construct figures so I wanted to give Naomi something that she would realistically wear and being a girl in southeast Louisiana t-shirts and t-shirts and shorts are an excellent option but since it's Naomi I wanted to give her cuff shorts to make them just a little bit more stylish all right sorry about that I lost you guys there so um, I drew in her kneecaps and I'm just initially indicating them with ovals and I'm also drawing her in flip-flops as an excuse to draw feet to demonstrate drawing feet for you guys so I think that about brings us back up to the present and I don't necessarily have a good pose in mind for this hand so we're just gonna kind of sketch our way through feel it out so now we have everything kind of basically sketched out everything kind of generically figured out now we can start tightening up the details now on the clothes I already went in kind of heavy-handed so really I'm going to just kind of tighten things up on the face and the hands I have loads of videos on drawing faces. So we'll go with kind of a simpler style today. It really helps to have features on your character that are kind of iconic or unique to them throughout the story. It helps you avoid same face syndrome. And one of the big, so manga is a big influence on my art. Anime is a big influence on my art style. And it's a big reason I got into comics. But one of the driving forces of why I make comics and why I draw the way I draw is I want to uh, reflect American life, specifically Louisiana life. So I've chosen to add a lot of facial details that kind of show a little bit more diversity And if you'd like to practice drawing a wide variety of people, Humanae, H-U-M-A-N-A-E, has a Tumblr and I believe a static site. And what that is, it is a resource that has loads of different 
people's portraits from all around the world. So if you want to practice drawing different races and ethnicities in different ages, Humane is a great website. Humans of New York is also really good for drawing a variety of people as well. And I have acquired a Bowie. So I'll do my best to draw well for you guys, but he may prevent it. I'm not going to kick him out of my lap because I haven't seen him for a week. And he's a good boy. That my boy. Now, stylizing hair is as important as stylizing faces. Figuring out how you want to stylize hair, drawing different types of hair, different hair textures. That's all really important. Being able to draw a wide variety of people is important as well. Increasing diversity in comics is definitely something that I feel pretty passionately about and um, having different types of representation is really important. Also, it's just an accurate reflection of life. And to me, drawing is in many ways about drawing truth. So drawing different people is about drawing truth. Things can be stylized and you're still drawing truth. All right, so I have committed to kind of a nonsensical hand pose, but that's okay. And when you're le learning how to draw, you want to give yourself more time to figure things out. So be patient. Don't compare your speed with the speed of people who've been doing it for decades. Don't compare your speed with people who have six months on you. Don't even compare your speed to people who are also kind of starting out at the same time because some people pick up on things a little bit more quickly than others. So be patient with yourself. And then finally, we're going to tighten up her legs. This is all about which details to draw, which details to leave out, what to emphasize. So even though this is realistic, there's certain things I still drew stylized. Obviously her face, but her hair is also stylized. How we're drawing her legs is stylized. Alright, so that is a fairly realistic depiction of Naomi. Next we're going to draw her in the Dots Rise style. Alright, next we're going to explore what I call my Dots Rise style. I have a lot of videos where I talk about stylizing faces, drawing different types of faces, and I have talked about the Dots Rise style in the past, so I'll make sure I link those videos either in the cards or in the description below. So if you're looking for more information on drawing cartoony characters, please do check out my description. So. For this style, we are seriously just drawing in dots for eyes. And sometimes I draw noses, sometimes I don't. And we're going to give her a really wide sort of, I think of it as kind of, of, of a heart shape. We'll draw teeth this in this one. Make sure to give her her mole, because that's one of her defining facial characteristics. Exaggerate her eyebrows a little bit. Then we're going to give her large, kind of cup-shaped ears. So, I think large ears are cute. So that's a characteristic that I often maintain. And I think I have a couple of videos on how to draw chibis, since we're not drawing chibis this time. Draw the interior of the ear since we're drawing a little bit larger today. Or for this style, sorry. And then start sketching in her curly hair. Sketch 
stitch in the lines for her t-shirt and her shorts and then she's wearing little flip-flops so I kind of have most of her clothes and hair sketched in so now I'm just gonna tighten up details this is a much faster style to draw in I don't draw, try to draw her hair I don't try to draw anybody's hair the same exact way every single time hair moves hair shifts position so I don't see anything wrong with slight inconsistencies when I'm talking about consistencies I mean really just kind of maintaining body proportions being able to draw the same characters recognizably as the same characters if hair shifts slightly no one's gonna not know that this and this are the same character And if you see me doing weird things with my hands, I'm just trying to stretch them out. Okay, so you can see in this style, she has much more rounded cheeks. I've tried to keep the forms fairly simple. Everything is a little bit smaller. I mean, she's like about two heads tall in this illustration. So everything on her body needs to be a little bit smaller. Now when I draw hands in this style, I often think of them as like little stars. So I keep the fingers really simple, a little bit bulky. And I'll change the hand because I already changed the hand, it's fine. So maintaining kind of the curve of the legs. So the gesture reads a little bit cleaner and it's a little bit more fun to look at. Maybe I'll bring her shorts down a little bit, or a little bit high. Still drawing the cuffs because the cuffs are a cute accent that kind of define the outfit. So you guys can see the style went a lot faster than the realistic style. So finally we have jelly bean and rubber hose. So I don't have a set jelly bean and rubber hose style yet. So I think what I want to go with this is something maybe more cartoony. So I am exaggerating the eyes and the mouth. Maybe I'm keeping the circles around the eyes a little bit smaller. Maybe I'm making her eyebrows a little bit thicker. I'm just kind of playing around with this style since I don't have a set way of doing it yet. I'm going to draw eyelids, no lower eyelids, and we'll do really round, filled in irises. Maybe we'll tighten the face a little bit just to give it a little more form. So she still has really rounded cheeks. We'll give her lower ears. So usually ears are from the eyebrow to the bottom of the nose, but as you're developing your own style, you can move them around, you can change the shape a little bit just to kind of fit what you want to do. If it doesn't work, you can always redraw it or slap a piece of tracing paper on it and redraw it till you have it figured out, till it's something you like. So I want to simplify the shoulders. I'm sorry, Naomi. This is not my most flattering style for you. I apologize. But, ah! you make a good demonstration because sometimes the style doesn't work for a character sometimes you have to really really work hard to figure out how you're going to translate 
a certain character in a certain style. Like maybe these shorts look kind of like a baggy diaper in this style, but they were cute here and they were cute here. So maybe if I were gonna go with something for my character Naomi in this style, I'd give her a dress instead. But we're gonna stick to the shorts because they make for consistency and a good teaching tool too. Like showing you guys when I fail, because artists fail all the time, we just don't always share it to the internet. Now sneakers would have been really fun in this style, but we went with flip flops so that we could better show what feet look like. So again, that's another instance of maybe the style doesn't, what we did, what worked in other styles doesn't work in this style. character design it can be hard it can be challenging it can require a lot of revisions until you get something you like but characters can grow and change over time just like your art and you can grow and change over time so if you haven't hit something just perfect yet that's not a good reason not to start your comic you could definitely do some mini comics of in your storyline or set in that world or with those characters to kind of help you figure out how you would want to draw them right we are keeping our arm lines really simple this hand is kind of a phoned in hand and I want to do three fingers and I'm doing really balloony fingers on this hand so three fingers is a common element in older cartoons like in old Mickey Mouse cartoons because it's easier to animate three fingers than to keep track of four and one of the reasons they gave those characters gloves is it was easier to keep track of white gloves for the viewer than having the hands the same color so hands were so important to the character design that you wanted to do something to kind of make them special okay so that is Naomi in the jelly bean and rubber hose style. So together we've drawn Naomi in three very different styles. We've done a semi-realistic style, which is kind of my house style for my comic 7-inch Kara. We've done a dots for eyes style, which is the style I use for Little Louisiana Cookbook. And we did a jelly bean and rubber hose style, which is new to me. So now I'm gonna show you guys um, a little bit of character refinement and we're gonna do that here with the jelly bean and rubber hose just because I had some complaints with this initial character design and while it doesn't need to be perfect I'd like to show you so I'm just gonna tape a small piece of tracing paper on top just to give us kind of a new surface to work with also, I like doing it this way because you can flip back to see the original. I'm just using some washi tape so it could even be removed. I'll tape it at the bottom too, just so it's a little bit easier and doesn't curl so much. This was tracing paper from a roll and those have a tendency to curl. Okay, so there's a lot of elements of the base design that I really like. So we're not going to do a total overhaul, but let's say I want to make her eyes bigger and maybe even more simplified. This is a great way also um, when you have kind of a style you want to draw in, but you want to do different renditions of the style to figure out which one's going to work best for your comic. So think of it like prototyping. So we actually made her eyes a little bit bigger. I like her nose. 
going to keep the mouth fairly the same. Maybe even fill it in so you guys can see a little better. Keep her mole. I like where her ears are at. Gonna make her eyebrows a little bit bigger. that we took in the bottom of the face. We gave it more cheek. So I'll give it a little bit more cheek there. So we're kind of refining the style, giving it more personality. in our hair just a little bit more fluffy. Now, I really don't like this outfit in this style. So I want something that, for her character, it fits her character, something that's going to be cuter. And we have, so let's use our red pen and kind of We'd refined the jelly bean a little bit. Okay, so that's where our jelly bean is now. Let's give her A dress. That's something she would normally wear. So that kind of simplifies the elements of her design. Let's simplify her shoulders. I want to do sneakers in this style. So we'll do that as well. This hand is mostly okay. Maybe we'd give her a bracelet just to kind of break up the hand from the rest of the arm. Make it a little easier for the eyes to track. Then, so we're going to do sneakers, so I'll sketch them in. I want them to be bigger. pretty cute like that. Kind of balances the rest of the figure as well. Ok, 
Okay, so this is our redesign. Let's compare it to our original. So, which one do you guys like better? Do you like our original design or do you like the redesign better? Let me know in the comments. And let me know of these three styles that we demonstrated today. Which is your favorite and which are you going to practice more? Okay, so uh, that about covers the very basics of changing up human anatomy, constructive human anatomy, to find your own style. From very cartoony to something more realistic, and you can go even more realistic from that. So if you'd like to see a realistic drawing video in the future, let me know down in the comments below. And check out some of my many, many other videos on figure drawing, constructive drawing, and designing characters. Thank you guys guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. If it was, if it was helpful for you, please do me a massive favor and tell a friend about it. Let them know too. Share this video with someone else who likes to draw. If you like what I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you never miss an update. On many Friday nights, I host a power hour art stream where I do drawing, Copic, and marker demonstrations. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you join me on Friday evenings for Power Hour. If you're looking for even more comic tutorial goodness, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. I have a wonderful intro to comic craft series that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. If you're in the Nashville area, I also teach classes through Plaza Artist Materials. So head on over to their website to see what classes are coming up and make sure you book early so you have a space. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon and uh, hopefully this was helpful, useful, and informative. Bye guys!